Do you know how I would like to die? I think it'd be pretty cool to be eaten by a shark. I'm gonna be surfing, I can't surf, I'll be surfing, and I'll go and hit this massive wave, and a giant shark will come out of the water, and it will eat me whole, and I will live the rest of my days in its belly like Pinocchio. Now you're thinking, well Simon, you're not really dead, but I'll be dead to my friends and family, so I think it still counts. What are we talking about? Well, I tell you what we're talking about. We are talking about the most unique ways you can die in video games. And let's face it, if this fate did befall me, you would say, my word, that's a very original way to be taken off this planet. Even though, again, yes, I understand I'm still living in the shark's stomach. Forget about it. My name is Simon Miller. Thank you for joining me here on What Culture Gaming. And this is the 10 most unique ways you can die in a video game. Number 10, put in an animatronic costume in Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, I'm gonna level with you. I only played Five Nights at Freddy's once and it scared me so much, I refused to ever go back. I never even finished the one I was playing because I was like, you gotta be kidding me. In fact, my total playing time was around about two hours. So you can just laugh at me in the comments like, <laughs> what a baby, what a loser. And I'll agree with you. In fact, I'll come in there and give you the thumbs up. And I know it just relies on jump scare after jump scare, but jump scares, are the worst. You could do 100 of these in a row and I would jump out of my skin at every turn. But what no one ever really seems to talk about is that there is some proper horror in this franchise and it's genuinely disturbing. Because when you do get caught by one of these teddies, they see you as nothing more than an endoskeleton. And because you are an endoskeleton, you have to be put into one of these animatronic suits. But as you should know, it's not all like a suit you would wear on Halloween. It's got wires and bits of metal in it, which means they are taking human flesh and stuffing it in there. And if you haven't figured it out, that is absolutely going to kill you while your skin is peeled off your body. The game never shows you this directly, but that's even worse because you have the vision in your head and nothing is ever gonna be as bad as the stuff you make up in your brain. Five Nights at Freddy's is so flubbed up and yet onwards it goes. Number nine, being strangled by a cow in Crash Tag Team Racing. I've had this argument before and I'm happy to have it again. This is the hill I will choose to die on, which ties into the list we're doing today. Mario Kart is better than Crash Tag Team Racing and all variations of Crash Racing. Somebody tried to tell me once that I was wrong and I almost ripped my own head off so I would have something to throw at them. In fact, Diddy Kong Racing would come before Crash Racing Diddy Core Racing is a very good game. A big difference with this though is that the Crash series in general has always been known for its over the top elaborate deaths. So the designers decided, well, we better make sure we do that here too, even though it is just a racing game. So you can be burnt by acid and you can be eaten alive. And while they sound terrible, nothing is as terrible as what comes next. Because if you veer off track into cow territory, said cow will kill you. And it doesn't eat you like we already mentioned or just give you a kick in the groin. It takes its tail and it chokes you to death. And I don't know about you, but that to me is cow murder. Also, it's completely nonplussed by this. It's like it does it every day. So it is completely screwed up. It is completely bonkers. And I thought on some level, this was meant to be a kid's game. Number eight, getting a venereal disease in Leisure Suit Larry. All point and click games have some kind of stupid death in them and Leisure Suit Larry is no different. I'm not sure this franchise of games will get made in 2020 because if you haven't played them, well, it doesn't really pull any punches and there are a lot of references to your own. And there are other notable ends in this that people still talk about, such as the fact you can drown yourself in the toilet or get game overed when a policeman sees you walking around with your penis hanging out of your fly and decides to take you to jail, which he should do. That's indecent exposure. The most surreal of these, though, is when Larry bites it because he gets an STD. Because part of the game, part of the story, part of the narrative is that Larry is trying to lose his virginity even though he's 38 years old. He finds a prostitute that's happy to do this and then you are given the choice. I can't believe I'm saying these words. Do you want to wear a condom or do you not? And if you choose the latter, indeed, you get a sexually transmitted disease. After the fact, Larry is so despondent that you did this that he goes and takes a walk into traffic and you can imagine what happens next. Does send a good lesson though. You should never have unprotected sex unless you are with a long time partner and you are looking to have a child. So you know, suit up. Number seven, being eaten by a genetically mutated salamander in Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil is horrific from start to finish anyway, but when you first come up against Del Largo, my word, the horror 
is real. I mean, it is awful. A monster that is just living beneath a lake. If you're like me and you're a bit of a dick and you want to see what a gun can do in a game and you go around shooting everything, as soon as you unleash a bunch of bullets into said water, this thing comes from nowhere and it just gobbles you up and in real life you have a heart attack and die because it scared the crap out of you. Capcom was even cheeky enough to put an achievement in Resident Evil 4 if this does happen to you, but what on earth have you achieved other than taking a good 25 years off your life. You do have to fight it later on regardless, so the silver lining is if you did fall into this trap, at least you know what's coming, but it is still just bad. It's bad all round. I can't play Resident Evil 4 for the same reason I can't play Five Out Freddy's. Number six, putting a lot pick up your nose in Quest for Glory. Another point and click game that will kick your ass for getting ahead of yourself, Quest for Glory actually makes this quite funny, even though in reality and literally, it is unbelievably disturbing. Simply put, if you do try and use the lockpick before you've leveled it up enough or before you have enough skill in it, you will instead ram it up your nose, give yourself a brain hemorrhage and die in the game. I am not making this up. It's an early lesson in how things are going to play out and that you shouldn't do things too fast. And if you actually learn this lesson and don't get ahead of yourself, it's actually kind of cool. This was apparent in both the original and the remake, which goes to show that everybody behind this knew it was important to leave in, and they weren't wrong. Number five, suffocating in a chest in the Binding of Isaac. Binding of Isaac is just weird all around. I mean, at one point, you're like in your mother's womb shooting lasers at butt monsters, so at no point should you ever expect to get anything normal. So on top of that, it's not a complete shock to learn that you get some of the craziest deaths imaginable, but Isaac has to take it one step further because you get these deaths when you win. When you win, you never win. This is all down to the cutscenes that you get after a victory where for some reason or another, Isaac will find a way to die. One of the more popular ones is when he just explodes into a thousand pieces, but the most disturbing is when he does indeed get into a chest or a crate or a box or whatever you want to call it to try and hide away from his crazy mother. But while he's in there, he suffocates to death. Let's not forget that the many forms of Isaac are also presented as a child. So this is just witnessing a kid come to the end of their life. If that doesn't make you feel very sick and keep you up at nights, then I don't know what to tell you. Number four, eating your crew in Sunless Sea. Sunless Sea is intent on putting you in many of these crazy scenarios that you would never even think about in reality, that's why at one point you're trying to stop a civil war between rats and you meet the Lord of Salt. I don't know what the Lord of Salt is, but he's here. He must really like the white stuff. As these experiences are so unusual, so are the deaths, especially one that you get the option to trigger when you arrive at King's Eater Castle. Because if you do decide to walk down this path, you eat, as the name suggests, your entire crew and I mean everyone. And I mean the chefs, the officers, the general peons, all are devoured and essentially murdered here. And just give yourself a minute and go, well, what would the fallout of this be? Sunless Sea will show you. And I don't know who came up with any of this, but I do know that it's absolutely nuts. And on top of that, if you are looking for something that is completely unique, both in deaths and in gameplay, go and check it out. Number three, death by trash compactor in Heavy Rain. I love Heavy Rain. I think it took everything that made Indigo Prophecy such a success but got rid of the weird bits, such as in that game when you have sex with a ghost. If you haven't played it, that's also true. In this spiritual sequel though, one of your main goals is to keep Norman Jaden alive. And because of that, so many people that have actually played through this don't know about all the crazy deaths that you can encounter. You would have seen one or two, but I bet you didn't know about this. And it all goes down when you have your encounter with Mad Jack, because if you don't take enough of the drug tryptocaine, you lose your focus. And then when you come to and regain consciousness, you find yourself in a car and the car is in a damn trash compactor. You are given one last quick time event to try and escape this, but if you fail, you do indeed get absolutely mullered by this machine and you have to play out the rest of the game remembering that one of the main characters met this fate because you couldn't be fast enough with your fingers once again. Number two in an elaborate death trap in Danganronpa V3. Half the fun of the Danganronpa series is, I'm sorry to say, some of the innovative ways they kill off their characters. I mean, it's just so clever and smart. I don't know how they come up with it. And you know this is true because there is thousands of people out there, maybe even millions, who don't even play the thing. They just go on YouTube and they watch all the deaths. Now, is that screwed up? Yes. But do I also understand it? Yes. Does that mean I'm screwed up? Yes. While most of this time, this means your adventure will end, in V3, it actually becomes integral to the story, integral to the plot, and you can't progress 
unless you kill someone off. It's a massive plot twist too because all the information that came out before the game's release suggested you were going to play through as Katie as the protagonist just wasn't true. Instead, in the middle of the first class trial, you find out that the murderer you were looking for was Katie, who had gone out there to try and stop a mastermind who got a bunch of other people and tried to get them to murder everybody else. What is going on? Unfortunately, this plan failed and killed an innocent, meaning you have to watch your former self get executed in a suitably horrible way. Once you know, you'll never forget. Number one, drowning in an ocean of jelly in Umaniko when they cry. It's not that surprising that an interactive visual novel would be responsible for one of the most unique deaths in games, especially when you just think about it on paper or see the headline. An ocean of jelly. It should be really comfortable and delicious, but it is not. I mean that literally too. It's not like a metaphor. I'm talking about an ocean of jelly and you don't get a choice here either. If you want to progress the plot and get to the next point, you have to do this and it starts when a new witch turns up. Because he decides to test his skills out on Rosa and that poor woman is then killed and resurrected over and over again more than Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. Eventually you are treated to some first person narration as Rosa, like I say, is transported into this lake of jelly where her bones are crushed and she meets her unfortunate end. As it would, so it's nowhere near as nice as it sounds. It's not like some kind of dream you would be having. I don't really understand what games are in 2020. Who is coming up with this? Know of any other unique ways you can die in a video game? Make sure you let us know in the comments below and then don't forget to like the video, share the video and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter at What Culture Gaming and watch more videos here, of course, on What Culture Gaming. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. You take care of yourselves and you take care of each other and don't die in any unique way. Thank you.